Hello and welcome to an exciting tutorial. Today we're going to cover the Canvas Update, a powerful new editor for our creations. This time I'll be joined by Leah, who will help us navigate this new update and explore all the little nuances that come with it. First things first, let's take a look at the new Create button. Right off the bat, we can see that it has a drop-down menu with the option to go to the Board page or the Canvas page. If we click directly on the Create button, we'll enter the board page. This is where we'll make our creations and use the normal features that we're used to, like image to image, in painting, edit mode, and more. Tell us about the board page. Now, regardless of whether you start in the board or canvas workspace, you'll find the playground options in the top left corner of your screen. If you click on the playground logo, you'll see a contextual menu specific to the workspace that you're in. Some options are the same across both workspaces, while others like file, edit, upload, and reset are only active in the Canvas workspace. We'll cover these additional options in more detail later in the tutorial. Those are the main changes we can see between the old Create page and the new Board page. Also, we saw differences in the placement of options and settings, which we can now find in the top left corner of the screen and the new Board and Canvas tabs, which allow us to easily switch between workspaces. These small changes may take a bit of getting used to, but they ultimately make the editing process more streamlined and efficient, all right, let's switch over to the Canvas workspace and explore the new capabilities we have for editing our creations. I'll hand it over to Leah to guide us through this exciting new update. Welcome to the Canvas workspace. On the left panel, we have a basic Canvas tutorial to help get us started. We also have the familiar filters section that we know from the board, formerly the Create page. And in the end, we have the Exclude from Image box where we put our negative prompt. On the right panel, we have some options that are familiar from the board. We got the guidance, the quality and detail, the seed, and the show advanced options to select a different sampler to use. At the top of the Canvas workspace, we have a set of powerful tools to help us create and edit our images. These include the Import Images tool, the Select tool, the Pan tool, the Generate image, and the Erase Brush tool. We'll cover each of these tools in more detail later in the tutorial. And last but not least, in the center of the Canvas workspace, we have the generation frame. This is where all the magic happens. All of our generations and edits are made inside this frame. Below the generation frame, we have the prompt box, where we can type in our prompts and customize our images. And of course, we have the generate button that bring our creations to life. Navigation is key to working effectively within the Canvas editor. To move around the canvas, we need to be focused on the generation frame. If we click outside of it, we'll lose our focus. When we hover over the generation frame with our cursor, it turns into a hand icon, indicating that we can click and hold to move the frame. On Mac OS, we can hold down the command key and scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Finally, we can resize the generation frame by grabbing the corners of the frame and adjusting it between a minimum size of 256 by 256 to a maximum size of 1024 by 1024. There are two primary ways to use the Canvas Editor, generating images from scratch within the editor, or importing existing images to edit and customize. In this tutorial, we'll focus on generating images from scratch within the Canvas Editor. To get started, I'll use my Go tool to quickly generate a prompt. For those who aren't familiar with how to use the Go tool, I'll include a link in the video description to help you get started. When generating images within the Canvas Editor, there are a few important considerations to keep in mind. First, if you generate an image with one of the new filters, you won't be able to use that filter to outpaint. However, don't worry. If you outpaint with a good part of the original image, the final result will still capture the overall aesthetics of the original. Another important consideration when generating images within the Canvas Editor is that you can't do variations of a generated image in the same way that you can in the board. When you click the Generate button within the Canvas Editor, it will replace any existing image within the generation frame. If there is an image underneath it, it will be deleted and replaced with the new one. However, if the generation frame has an image with erased spots, the new image will only fill in the missing information in those spots and leave the rest of the image intact. To create a more complex image, 
Leah is going to generate three separate images within the canvas editor and blend them together at the end. As she creates and blends these images, she needs to make sure that her prompt is updated to be coherent with the information already in the generation frame. This is crucial to ensure that the final image is cohesive, visually appealing, and that the new images blend seamlessly with the existing ones. As Leah mentioned earlier, when out painting in canvas, it's important to ensure that there are gaps within the generation frame. This is because they will be filled in with information from any surrounding pixels within the frame with the help of the prompt, which will match the desired aesthetic. To do this, Leah is adding some part of the already generated image into the frame before generating new images. This helps to create a cohesive blend and maintain the same overall aesthetic throughout the project. When using the Erase tool within the Canvas Editor, we're essentially telling the program to visualize what's surrounding the deleted zones and use the prompt to fill the gaps while maintaining the overall aesthetic of the image. This process helps to create a coherent image that blends seamlessly together and is visually pleasing. If you're not happy with a generation in the Canvas Editor, you can use the undo feature to show the deleted spots again. If you don't do this and continue generating, the program will delete the entire image within the generation frame and create a completely new image. Use the Control Z or Command Z in Mac to undo. As you can see, Leah is using the erase tool in the canvas editor to eliminate some spots that don't please her. However, she's also realized that the erase tool alone isn't enough to achieve her goal. Therefore, She's adding more information to the prompt to help guide the generation process and create an image that better aligns with her vision. To wrap up the editing part, I want to show you an extra workflow that can add more creativity to your image creation process. Let's say that we've completed this piece, but we want to bring the animals closer together. You'll see me download the image and crop the animals apart. Then, with a simple copy-paste, I'll bring them back into the canvas editor. Any image in the clipboard can be pasted into the canvas. From there, I'll use the erase tool to merge the animals together and generate the final image. That's it for the editing in Canvas. We've covered a lot of ground, but there are some other aspects of Canvas that complement this workflow that I'd like to cover in more detail. Let's dive in. Every generated image or imported image when selected have three icons on the top left corner. The delete option allows you to remove the image from the canvas. The download option lets you save the image to your computer. And the copy option allows you to copy the image to the clipboard so that you can paste it elsewhere either within the canvas or outside of it. As I demonstrated earlier, we can import images by simply pasting them from the clipboard. However, there are two more options available in the top bar of the canvas workspace for importing images. We can import images from the computer or from a playground image link. In this case, we can get the link of images from the board or the profile images. It's worth noting that when you import an image from your computer, the clipboard, or from a playground link, it will be placed directly onto the canvas as a new layer. You can easily arrange multiple images in Canvas and save them as a single image. Simply make a window selection on the images you want to save and click the download button. The images will be saved as a single merged image file. Finally, I'd like to talk about some of the options available in the playground menu. We have the File option, which allows you to save and import your Canvas projects. 
These files can also be shared with others. The edit option allows you to undo and redo your actions, although many people may prefer to use keyboard shortcuts for these functions. Additionally, we have the upload option, which allows you to import images from your PC or from Playground as we can do it in the tools top bar icon. Finally, there is the reset option, which clears the canvas so that you can start a new project from scratch. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this tutorial informative and are now inspired to try out the new Canvas editor to edit your existing creations or create new ones.